Hey folks, welcome back to Battle Mode channel. Uh, this is Galactic Civilizations 4 Supernova version 2.9 Starlight update. And uh, I want to get some disclaimers out of the way very, very quickly. One, I work for Stardock, so I work for the developer and publisher of this game. And so, yeah, just take any value judgment I make about the game with a grain of salt. You need to make your own mind up about these games. So I want full transparency there. However, I liked this game long before I got a job working for the developer here, so it is it is a very, very good game now. It was not always a good game. <laughs> I don't think Stardock will mind me saying that. Uh, my friend Rob from Explominate, a very good buddy of mine, he trashed this game uh, when it first came out, Galsiv 4, and I know a few other people who really did not like it, who do like it now. It, it's uh, Stardock has done a sterling job uh, going through the game and just making it loads better. By the way, just so you know, if you're not familiar with my uh, Let's Play style, I do tend to play slower and explain things quite a lot at the start of the game. This makes my series, I, I think, I get a lot of feedback saying these make great tutorials. Um, I'm going to try to play this game a little bit quicker. It's really difficult for me to finish series of Galactic Civilizations because the, the version tends to update really quickly. However, um, I've got a bit of time before the next update. We've We've just had the announcement of Mega Structures, which is the next DLC that's going to be coming out in December. So there's a little bit of time yet. I won't promise to be able to finish the series. I never can, I'm afraid, with big long strategy games like this, but I will do my best. At the very least, you'll be able to get a feel for what's new in the game and, you know, kind of how it plays. I'm going to be playing as the Yaw, and the reason is the Yaw have had some really cool visual updates recently, and the, the way that the game plays now is especially on the difficulty level and the settings that I use, the yaw are quite challenging, and uh, which is good for me because I'm a, I'm a decent player now. I'm not great, I'm not perfect, but I, you know, as you might expect, I have to play this game quite a lot at work, and so I play it a lot, and yeah, I'm getting better at it. I'm not perfect though, I will get, I'm likely to get beaten. In fact, I might actually set the difficulty setting very, very high. For those of you who just want to get straight into the game, by the way, um, you might want to skip forward a few minutes until the game starts. I do want to talk a little bit about the game just before I go. So here's a bit of, you know, for those of you who don't like the talking, you know, just skip the video ahead, right? Uh, but for those of you who stick around, because you like to hear me talking about these games. What I will say is, about Galsiv is that <clears throat> it is a sandbox, the, you know, it's a kind of a sandbox oriented Space 4X game. Um, I... I, originally when Galsiv 4 came out, I think this was like a 4 or 5 out of 10 game. It was really, it was, it had the bones of a good game there, but it was just, just didn't feel complete to me. And it kind of, it sucked in a lot of ways. And Stardock, they, when they, when they had that feedback, they took it dead seriously. And they, not my feedback, but just generally. People, you know, some people liked it, but most people thought it was lacking. So they really went back to the drawing board with it. And they reworked it in a big way, and it's so much of a better game now. However, Galsiv is quite a divisive game in the Space 4X community because it's one of those games, you know, to use a British term, it's kind of like Marmite, if you know what I mean. It's like one it's one of those games that people either seem to love or they hate. And I think if you get on with Galsiv, if you like the the other games in the series, this is the best one now. Uh, it's Galsiv 1 is very different, and that's still very worth playing, by the way, because it's a really good game still. Uh, the, the original Galsiv 1, the Windows version, is really, really damn good. Um, the, the OS 2 version, which came out in like before Master of Orion, <laughs> I haven't played that. Uh, I don't think many people are able to play it now, so I haven't played that one. But out of Galsiv 2, 3, and 4, this is the best one, in my opinion. I've played all of the others. Um, as far as sandbox games are concerned... It gives you, it, it, as a sandbox game should, it gives you lots and lots of potential playstyles. The natural consequence of games that are designed like this, unfortunately, is they're always a little bit loose. So there are going to be optimal playstyles that come out. There are going to be stuff that's a bit unbalanced. There's mechanics in there that are there to kind of help you in a pinch that if you abuse... I tell you what, Gals is a bit like Dark Souls, <laughs> okay? Like especially on the high difficulty settings. For those of you who know the analogy, right? Dark Souls is it is a difficult game until you learn it, until you learn the patterns of the enemies, until you learn the levels, and then it gets kind of easy. And you can make you can make Dark Souls really, really, really easy for yourself, like brokenly easy, if you abuse the RPG mechanics in it. And Gals is a little bit like that in the sense that once you know the game well, there are mechanics that in that are in there that are kind of there to either help sort of newer players or to help you when you're in specific situations. I'd say. Uh, that if you abuse them, you can kind of make the game kind of easy, unless you put the game on a very, very high difficulty setting. So, 
if you're the sort of player who likes to just to play with everything you've got uh, and you're a good space forex player i'd put the game on a high difficulty setting I think if you are a new a beginner to the series, you know, or you're a beginner to Space 4X, put the game on normal at the very highest, or easy even, and just play through and learn it. Because Galsiv is not an easy game. If you're an expert, I mean, look, I've been playing 4X a long time and I play them a lot. So I'm pretty good at 4X games. But I struggle with this game's difficulty sometimes, even with some of the more unbalanced stuff that's in the game, okay? So it's a really, really interesting game. It's not the tightest game, like, you know, it's not tight like Master of Orion is, but you can do loads more. And it's not like some loose <clears throat> mess of a game that's just full of padding and boring filler like Stellaris, in my opinion. I don't, don't like Stellaris, as you can tell. I think it's a garbage game. <laughs> it's very, very good. It's a very fun role-playing game you know, kind of visual novel. <laughs> as, as far as the strategy game is concerned, it's not very good. This is a really good strategy game, and it's got lots and lots of cool stuff that's, like, you know, the sort of stuff that Stellaris promises, but, uh, it, it, you know, wrapped up in a better game, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, we're going to play as the Your Singularity. These are the uh, the, the, the evil AI. <laughs> the, evil, the evil robots. Um, they are a synthetic species, so they don't require food, and they don't have any natural growth. You've got to manufacture your citizens. Uh, so that means that you require Durantium in order to be able to manufacture the population. One of the... I'm just going to turn this music down because your music's really loud. It's really good as well. Uh, so the your uh, you're kind of pulled in many directions at the start of the game. So they're actually quite difficult to play. Uh, it, they they in certain situations they can be really really strong, but in other situations they can be really really difficult. I'm going to put the game on. Um, I want a few sectors and I want it to be large. I think. Yeah, and I want plenty of planets because I really like the planet management in this game. It's my favourite thing. Um, habitable, pl habitable planets, extreme planets. Yeah, we'll put it on. Yeah, this will. This basically is a sort of resource modifier. So the less the habitable planets, the less resources you've got. I think I'd leave it on occasional. Uh, I might put extreme planets up to common so that there's slightely less. Your planets, that you, oh, mind you, that's going to make it easier for me as the Yor because we've got adaptability. So this ability here, right, enables us to get... We can actually colonise planets that other people colonise early. So that would actually give me a big advantage. Um, that's interesting. I'm going to play it on Genius. This is about right for me. <clears throat> this is... Uh, the, the, the AI will get some... Will get some, um, you know, resource modifiers at this level. Excuse me. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep everything else normal. I want more minor races. I like these. Hostile entities, I'm gonna, just going to put on uncommon. These are actually quite brutal in the game now. They had a real... They, they used to be kind of crap, but now they're really, really strong. <laughs> you have to actually be careful of them. Civilization proximity. Um, I still... Even working for the developer team, I still don't know how this works fully. It's, it's not... This is one of my criticisms of the game. This is still a little bit unintuitive. I think they might have made this better now. Uh, generally speaking, though, if you put it if you put it somewhere between here and here, they can be anywhere between right on your ass, right up your ass, and miles away. <laughs> so, uh, it, I, yeah, it's play with it. Uh, I, I there are there are some people who like. There's my friend Delano who, who plays this game a lot, and he's an expert. He's a like Galsiv expert, and he can be able to tell you exactly what these do. I still, uh, I, I I tend to just put it on not too close or distant. <clears throat> It does change. The civilization proximity does change depending on the galaxy, uh, the, the, whether you've got a singular galaxy, sorry, a, num a singular sector or, a, you know, many sectors. If you put it on distant or far, they're going to start, if you put it on far, it's going to, you're going to start in different sectors. I don't want that. I actually want them close to me because um, I want the, I want the action to come kind of thick and fast because I don't know how long I'm going to be able to play it for. Okay. Uh, I'll just go to advanced settings actually and just check what's in here. Uh, no, we don't want to disable tech trading. So I want to disable tech... Wait. Yeah, that's right. So I want to disable tech brokering. This basically means that you can't immediately... Or players can't immediately trade out technologies that they found that turn to other people. Okay. So it stops you from instantly propagating, you know, new technology right across the universe. I like... I prefer to have that in uh, Space 4X games. Okay. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Just had to take a quick break. Okay, so yeah, this is the. We're just gonna leave all the victory conditions as they are, because uh, I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna win. It's likely with the Yor, we're gonna be conquering. 
That's kind of what they all like to do eventually. Let's remove these random random sieves and we're gonna we're just gonna pre-select them. Uh, I like I really really like the the classic civilizations in this game. I like all of them actually. They're all pretty damn good. They're all pretty cool. I um, personally have a preference to the core civs over the uh, alien GPT ones, even though the alien GPT system is great. Uh, and I do like to use it from time to time. I, t I, I actually, I think that the core civilizations and the way they're designed is really good in this game. However, the alien GPT system is cool because you can you can come up with some really cool stuff, really wild stuff. Let's get the Archaeans in. Let's get the uh, Drenge in. Let's get the Taurians. We're gonna get the you know the the, the core guys in there. Uh, we'll have the Festron Hunt because they're going to be an intro. They could, they're actually you can actually make friends with them as the ore because they're not they're not going to eat you. They the, one of the updates that. That to the game that we had with version 2.9 is that the Festeron now they can't eat anything that they shouldn't be able to eat. They can only eat things that eat food, basically. So they can only lay their eggs in other humanoids and that kind of thing. Uh, let's have the Ar uh, let's have the Altarians. Um, I'm going to put a bit of a mix. Let's get the Korath in there. We'll have the Cosmic Contaminant because they're a real threat. Um, We'll have some good guys in there as well. Like the, well, not the good knives, but the more sort of peaceful ones like the Phalanoids and the Mimarts. How many do we want here? It's saying 14. Um, they're kind of dangerous. The Zoloxy. Let's have the Man... Uh, the Manti... Yeah, they're diplomatic. So we, we, you want a bit of a mix, right? Depending on what kind of game you want, but you generally want a mix... Um, it's saying recommended 14 players this side of the map. Um, I might put in... Let's put in one of the newer ones, like the Intuary. They're expansionist. Maybe I'll go for one that's a little bit more... We've got the Onyx. Or the Luxar. Let's put the Luxar in. Okay. So 14 players. We're going to have a little bit of space <clears throat> to uh, expand, I think. But not a lot. It depends on, you know, the look of the roll of where we start. I'm not going to be re-rolling the map. I'm just going to play with whatever I've got. And if I get beaten, I get beaten. I'm not going to cry about it. Man, this your music, it really, really is loud. It's one of the most, it's one of the louder pieces of music in the game. Okay. So my buddy Daz Tactic made a really uh, a really interesting comment. Artificial beings, originally servants of an ancient species known as the Icon. Okay, so uh, for those of you who don't know, this is my voice. <laughs> as far as I know, I'm there. I'm actually the world's first AI voice actor. Uh, uh, the uh, guys at Stardock they they synthesized my voice and then used it for the uh, for the for all the text in the game. So that's really cool. <laughs> I think, <clears throat> I'm not 100 percent certain, but I'm probably a Guinness World Book record. Uh, you know potential for this one i think i don't i don't think there's any other games that, that did this before we did uh, although if you know any that came out before we added that feature please let me know i'd be, I'd be curious to know uh, yeah my friend da does tactic made an interesting point about stardock which i agree with that stardock are really good at cinematics and they're really really they're, they're just they punch above their weight right when it comes to how the quality of their cinematics in you know into, you know compared to the size of the studio because they are re they really really do well and nothing quite gets across the scale of Stardock's games and what is in their games in a sort of like cinematic and si uh, symbolic fashion quite like how they make their cinematics it's really really beautiful the way they the way they're done anyway here we are so okay we're in a reasonably large sector here so this is Iconia. Here's where we get to start. Now, I'm just going to make sure that we've got some options turned. Okay, I want to turn fast moving order to save off some stuff that I use when I'm working. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's have a bit of an explore. Now, uh, we don't necessarily need 
that the most habitable worlds because we are the yore. However, you, you usually want to kind of head towards the orange, the orange and yellow stars um, early if you can. Let's send a probe out this way. No, I think I'm going to send it out to this purple one. Let's just see what we can find out here. I like to manually control my... Uh, oh, found some Promethean at the start of the game. That's going to be useful for us. So let's have a look at Iconia itself. Okay, got some wealth here. That's going to be good. Oh, that'll be really, really nice look. So we can we can really play economic yore if we want. Uh, we've got some manufacturing here with this uh, cataract. <clears throat> How's about uh, we start somewhere like this? Or maybe there. And then we can start getting some of the manufacturing stuff kind of going down here. Because these deserts will be absolutely fine for that. We don't need food because we're a synthetic race. Yeah, I think I'm going to put it there. <clears throat> this is going to be a really, really good start for us, I think. Okay. Uh, first thing we want to do... Now, we've got a Durantium scanner here. This is going to be useful. This basically is a scanner. Uh, we've also got the Precursor Relic scanner, which is also going to increase our sensor range as well. Uh, these two together are pretty useful. Um, I think we also probably want to get a manufacturing district quite early. Now, I don't think this... Yeah, the scanners don't help you in manufacturing. Of course they don't. So let's just go for the, uh, the manufacturing district first. We want to make our, we want to build our manufacturing up. Looks like we started with a couple of entrepreneurs as well. That's pretty lucky. We don't get natural access to those. So that's pretty good. We don't want to change those jobs. Uh, we've got one control per month and we start with a lot of control. Uh, that's one of our features. So, okay. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. We're, we're quite high on research, so we've got to research it too. Okay, this guy, um, I'm going to make him as a, I'm going to train him as a worker just to increase our manufacturing at the start of the game and just kind of... I think we're going to... Are we going to speed this up? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's going to give us an extra 1.1, I think that was, in manufacturing output for the planetary outputs. Okay, shipyard's idle. Um, we probably want to get a probe out early. We've got some money for rush building, so... And we've got a decent... We've got a reasonable economy, I think. Okay, so there we go. Uh, we're going to build a probe. I'm not going to rush build it immediately. Uh, we've got a surveyor here. These are going to be used for finding the anomalies, surveying anomalies. You can also use them a little bit for uh, searching. They don't have the big, the biggest sensor range. Uh, I forget where the sensor range is on them now. Yeah, sensor range three. Let's just send it over this side of Raconia and just see if we can find any uh, anything. Usually you see a few more at the start of the game. Uh, first thing we want to uh, go for, I would say, let's weaponize probes. It's going to give us frigates early. Uh, no, we don't want that. We want. Well, let's go for galactic expansion protocol. That's one of the early. The these these are. This is something I don't like. This, this is one of my criticisms that I do have about Galsiv. <clears throat> Stardock wanted to introduce the the very many mechanics of the game a little bit, you know, like in a staggered way. <clears throat> to f make it easier for new players. I wish you could disable this because I don't like this kind of mechanic. I don't like games that are made for beginners uh, because they they kind of, once you've learned it, you're only, a be you're only a beginner of these games, right? For a couple of turns, really. You know, you might be a beginner of one of these games for like maybe four or five hours. After that, you're no longer be a beginner and then I don't want to have to jump through the beginner hoops. Uh, that's that's what, that's one of my criticisms about this game. However, uh, I, under I do understand why they, why that is like that. Stardock have to consider, you know, the great, the bigger audience. Um, so there is, a, there's always, here's just a, a little bit of exposition for me, from me. There's always a bit of a, 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 a push and pull, you know, a tug of war between making games that are just great games, right? And making games that are good, you know, that are, that people are going to buy and people are going to stick with longer than that steam, you know, that two hour steam refund window. So if someone buys the game and they see all this stuff and they're new to the genre and they don't really know what's going on, they're more likely to refund it as if they have this kind of slower paced kind of introduction. And to give Stardock credit, they've not dragged it out too long. It's really quick. It's only like a turn or two before you get access to everything. So you have to build this colonial leadership council thing and then you have to build the galactic expansion protocol thing as well. Um, I would rather this was not in the game personally, but you know, it makes good business sense, I guess. Okay, uh, let's continue. Uh, we've got a colony ship with a with a leader in here. Uh, sorry, with a citizen in here. The good citizen as well. We want to save that for 
when we I want I'm kind of tempted to get the to get the Duran team scanner up as soon as possible. It's gonna give us extra sensor range. That's five sensor range. That's an extra five as well. I've, actually, that's three boats. Sorry, it's two plus three per, per level. So it could actually get quite high sensor range increase on this. And I can't remember. I think if you maybe if you put a research district in there. No, okay, that's not going to help it. Okay, that's going to be nine cents range. That's going to be that's going to be the way to go. I think. Now we are going to get a little bit less overall production uh, production doing this, but I think we want to get that. We're going to rush build that out too. Um, what do we got here? The probe can move a little bit further. Let's move that guy out that way. And the colony ship. I don't know where I want to move that. I'm gonna wait for the sensor. I think so. We're just gonna we'll just skip a turn that one. Usually, you might want to explore the colony ship colony ships. However, with the with the pirates and the monsters being a lot stronger now, I would not advise you do that. <laughs> it's really probably a, it's a really a bad idea. Let's just see if we can just send this thing out this way. See what we can find. Um, I like to move. I like to. I don't like to automate my uh, probes, particularly at the start of the game. Okay, let us rush build this now. Yes, yeah, it's 300 credits, quite a lot, but let's see what we've got leader-wise. <clears throat> oh, by the way, first we look at the map. We just oh no, we won't get that to reveal that till next turn. He's a good leader. So, what else have we got? He's cheap and he's got really high diligence. Look, he would be good because he's got low social skills and higher in other skills. He might make a decent faction leader. Um, yeah, so he would be really good for singularity because he's got a reasonable intelligence, but then he's got low, he's got actually low social skills, which means he's not going to add uh, any of the the, uh, the maintenance penalty that you'll get. Uh, I'm buying him though; he's great. He's going to be a good leader. Look, yeah, he's going to be a great governor. Although you get less growth, but that doesn't matter for us. So we want him as a governor eventually. Uh, let's go to... I think we'll put him in Exploration, which is going to increase our range. I'll have him as the Minister of Technology. Uh, he's going to be a good diplomat as well. He provides plus five manufacturing to the civilization they're assigned to. Now, that could be... that could be That's a big bonus, by the way. That You can really help out an, an, an ally using that. Um, I don't think we need any more of these yet. Let's just, we'll just wait. We'll wait on the leaders. Again, I feel like we should probably be sending this out. I might... S oh, there we go, look. So, wait, we actually... Uh, it actually unlocked that. So, what have we got? we got a capsule and some space junk. Let's grab this capsule uh, next turn. Still can't see any colonizable planets. I'm going to risk sending this seed out this way. I've uh, got a pr the Precursor Relic Scanner wants to go up as well. Yeah, that's going to have a massive sensor range if we put it there. Uh, at the expense of, you know, potentially getting a big research boost. And that's quite, that's a 10% research boost we would get. But I do like the sensor range. Okay, yeah, we can't reach, we can't rush twice in a row. All right, so I'm going to end the turn. Let's see what's happening. Galactic expansion protocol. This allows us to get civilization policies. Um... Next. Weaponized probe is going to give you uh, some of the early weapons, in-game weapon stuff. This is a unique thing. for. There's a, by the way, all the tech trees have been... Well, a lot of the tech trees have really been, you know, they're unique now for different races. Really, Some of the work that the Stardock have been doing on this has been really, really cool. Um, I think we're going to go for this, though. It's going to give us trade uh, max trade licenses. And we want, out of all the options we've got there, uh, for those of you who don't know... You can pick any of these candidates, but you get a 50% research uh, point bonus if you pick one from the, uh, the... This is the Special Insights list, basically. So, you know, you get... It's a really cool system. I really like this. I wish other games did it, if it works for them. But, like, uh, basically it means that it kind of guides you in a certain way, but it's randomised. Uh, it, and it's not, you know, certain things are rubber-banded to be more likely to appear in here. However, it, you get a choice, right? It's like, do I want to, do I, I really need this, so I'm going to spend twice as long researching it. Or I could kind of go in this way that the game's sort of nudging me towards. 
I think it's a really cool system. Introduce random, like, you know, a little bit of random play without hard locking you into it. Okay. Uh, we've now got this adjustable tax rate slider, by the way. So you can you can adjust the tax rate to your heart's, to your heart's content. Um, it's designed... We don't really want people min-maxing this. <clears throat> what I mean... Sorry. Min-maxing is fine. That's not the word I was looking for. Micromanaging is the term I'm looking for. And I mean micromanaging in the literal sense where you kind of make incremental changes every single turn for minimal gain. We don't want people doing that, really. You don't need to either, really, unless you're playing on a very, very, you know... I've never ever... Oh, hold on. I've never felt the need to do that in these games, in Galsiv. I'm going to go for land exploitation here. It's going to increase pollution, but we don't care about pollution. It's going to give us a big income bonus. Um, that would mean that we could potentially drop the tax rate and make our, uh, make our robots happier. But I'm not sure if we really need to. Let's send this probe. Okay. Right at the moment, it's looking like we've got a bit of a tall game going on. Because we don't really see... I don't see much in the way of decent planets. There's only these feeder worlds that are going to be feeding back into Iconia. That's not going to be a terrible strategy, though. Uh, we can actually manufacture population, too. That's going to cost 25 uh, control and 100 credits. I think that's a worthwhile thing to do early on. Let's just put that onto Iconia. So, yeah, we've got another leader here. Look, oh, he's going to be a good worker, too. Okay, that's really, really good. So we've got a bunch of workers. Uh, once we've got some Durantium, we'll be able to make... We'll, uh, we'll be able to build some more. Have we actually found some Durantium on the planet now? I think we have, yes. So yeah, we've got uh, point 0.3 being produced every single turn. At the cusp of a computational renaissance, the Yaw Collective orchestrates its next grand phase of synthetic evolution. Networks humming with the electric wisdom of untold aeons, they prepare to assimilate revolutionary technologies into their very framework. Each node, a nexus of potential, echoes with the binary promise of expansion. Poised to extend their consciousness across the galactic expanse, the Yaw forego flesh-bound limitations, their collective intellect converging on a singular, indomitable purpose to engrave the logic of their existence deep into the fabric of the cosmos itself. They now have a decision to make. <clears throat> okay, so this is a choice of... It basically throws a load of random buildings onto your planet. Now, these are really cool because... It can put them in places where you don't want them to be, and that's the risk you take. However, you can always del delete them. You can destroy them if you need to, to make room for something more important. But it gives you a big boost at the start of the game. We could increase our um, research, or we could increase our, you know, production. I think, before we make that choice, let's just have a look at the planets we've got around us. Because these are the ones that are going to be likely, unless we, there's other planets around here, core worlds. Looks like we've got a bit of a mix between... Um, raw materials and technology so either way would be okay i guess i kind of i kind of itself more geared towards technology input look uh, i i do wonder just for a more balanced game if we were to go into if i were to pick the quantum processors the your collective orchestrates its next oh that's process no that's going to be research networks humming with the electric wisdom yeah. of untold aeons they prepare to assimilate revolutionary technologies into oh, this can be constructed on other core worlds each node, a nexus of potential echoes with the binary i'll go with the autonomous fabricators so you'll see that it's just put, uh, bumped a load of these and we've got durantium deposits have appeared now on the planet so we've got a self-replicating factory here look and this has actually appeared right next to a durantium deposit which gives you a manufacturing bonus as well uh this one's actually appeared here too this is really good uh, this has increased our manufacturing by quite a lot look so you'll see that a self-replicating factory appeared. There's another one here. This just gives you a really, really big manufacturing boost at the start of the game. Uh, we're going to need this on Genius. Because <laughs> the game's going to get difficult pretty quickly, I tell you. I've been playing this on Steam a little bit when the uh, when the updates come out uh, for Stardock. And the last time I played it, I was kind of glad that the uh, the stream had to end. Because I was starting to get beaten on, on Genius. It was starting to look a bit, you know... <laughs> sketchy let's say okay this is quite a lot of credits look but control sorry but quite a few credits does give you a bunch of stored goods that can help you get a ship out quickly if you need it wow lots of uh lots of promethium in this game okay not finding much around here i think we probably oh look at that I don't want to rush build it um, just for one turn. It, it causes a, a penalty actually on your uh, in happiness in your planet. 
So you don't really want to do that. Uh, okay, let's have a look at the event. Has been born on the planet. The first that are likely to live and die on distant worlds. How should we best prepare them? Let's get an entertainer citizen here. I think with this, uh, you don't get entertainers very easily. So it's worth getting one if you can get one. So, uh, yeah, I imagine this guy's like some kind of like playing some crazy, he's like a DJ he's playing some crazy electronic music or maybe some sort of <laughs> talk, you know, the robot talk show host. Okay, but that's boosted approval quite high. Approval is applied as a product modifier to all of your planetary outputs. Uh, sorry, not to all of them, but to manufacturing and research. Uh, maybe food, is it? Forget if it applies to food. Well, anyway. Uh... It, that won't affect us anyway, but yeah, so the lower your approval, like it just, it produces just like a massive modifier. So if you've only got 50% approval, you'll only get 50% of your potential manufacturing. Uh, it's brutal. So you want to keep that as high as possible. One way you can do that, by the way, is by using the, excuse me, hitting the buttons wrong. There we go. So uh, you can adjust your tax rate. It will, the reducing taxes will increase approval. And so in, you'll see that these manufacturing and research outputs change look as you go up and down. Uh, so if you really want to get loads of money, you can do, but you'll reduce your approval really low. So you'll see that your manu manufacturing and planetary output, uh, sorry, your research outputs will tank. However, if you want more money, you can kind of change it a little bit. So here, look, this is why I like this new system. You can play with it a little bit. And I think the older system where you only had like, you know, a, I think it was like four or five settings. Min-max players did not like that. Uh, they they it, That was done originally, I think, to kind of reduce micromanagement. You know, the, 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 the we could, you know to reduce the chance of people micro mi wanting to micro it too much. However, um, I think with hindsight, that turned out to, you know, people like to be able to kind of play with, you know, fiddle with it a little bit. Uh, anyway, so there we go. I'm going to set it around there. That's that seems to be like a happy medium look between getting the maximum out, uh, production output and the uh, planetary income. So we're getting four per turn. Let's hit the end turn button. Okay, starting a new month. I love this spot. Uh, oh, there we go. So our um, the the other scanner that we built on the planet has gone up, and there we have a really good, nice planet. Oh, we've also got a good one here too. I think we should probably go and grab that one now when we're close by to it. We've also found some antimatter, Illyrium and antimatter look, and we've got some Durantium here on our home planet, of course. We want to go and grab the Durantium. Durantium is really important for the ore. The more Durantium we've got, the more murder bots we can create. Uh, we've got another probe. Let's send this probe out. Uh, we'll send it down this way. There's probably... Uh, the, the the orange stars often are going to have other civilizations and we want to find the other civilizations as soon as we can um okay what have we got here we've got a precursor relic oh, right so we've got some of these precursor relics have you as you can see some of this free stuff that you get this came with one of the dlcs i forget which one now uh the the first one but these ones you can delete them if you want um but you know so it, it's interesting because it shakes up the, the the puzzle game aspect of the planet, the planetary management a little bit because you got to choose now. Do I do I have these things that are a little inefficiently placed, but they're free and they give you a bonus, or do I delete them? It's entirely up to you, depending on how you want to play. Uh, I think we get some. Maybe we get some more manufacturing stuff up early. Wow, look at that financial district's really quick to build though. Ah, oh, that could be. That's really really valuable too. Also, we could get research. Um, yeah, let's get a manufacturing district up here. It's only three turns. It will that will give us more manufacturing. That's actually going to give us a plus six percent bonus on top of the flat production bonus it gives us. Let's get another seed ship out. Okay, that seed ship's going to go out to Elba uh, Elba One, and we'll go and colonize that one. Uh, we we do need to start quickly getting as much durantium as possible it might actually be an idea you know um, to get a constructor and get the yeah i think i think if we get the constructor first oh no maybe i really i want to claim that before anyone else does so we'll get the seed uh, the colony ship and then we'll do the constructor and we'll get the uh, we'll get the extra durantium in so we uh, then we'll be able to start building Population on yore. Here's what I mean. Right, this is. I think the yore are a really brilliant, brilliantly designed race in this game. Now, the designers are knocked it out of the park because you're torn in so many different directions. Do you build more population to try to rapidly expand, 
Or do you, you know, maybe I could just get all of these feeding worlds and just play tall and just have one colony or one core world with lots of colonies attached and then just cram as many yore on there as possible and all have them working. It's it's so cool. You've got so many play style options. This is what I mean by uh, Galsiv 4 being a fantastic sandbox game in the sense of there's so many play styles. You can really come up with your own unique play style in this game and chances are it's going to be viable in, in, in a lot of circumstances. You can also, there's, it's also got a wonderful way of implementing the concept of organic difficulty. And what I mean by that is, you know, um, you can pick your path through the game and choose your own difficulty with it. Okay, here's Universal Translator. Uh, pertinently, this is going to give us trade licenses and the ability to create uh, trade ships and also talk to alien civilizations. Okay. Um, allows us to start building asteroid miners. Now, have we got any asteroids nearby? Yes, we do. That would inc Asteroid miners might be good. It's not always one that I will go for early. Artificial gravity is nice to get early. So is data transmission protocol, so the extra policy. Um, but I do like to get the uh, mining ships early. Yeah, let's do that. Because we can... We'll, so we, we'll get a couple of mining ships and we can get these um, these jumped into our colony. Now, uh, arguably the, the extra civilization policy might be a better early game thing. And extreme automation is pretty nice. Oh, yeah, I, actually I'm looking at that now four turns for data transmission protocols. I think we're going to go for that instead, for guys. Now, um, even though we did get a bit of a, uh, you know, a 50% bonus on the asteroid mining, that's not going to be as powerful as getting extreme automation in here. And we've got the, uh, we, we've currently got the approval rating to be able to use that because you do take a penalty to your uh, your outcome or your, uh, to your financial input output. Yeah. Let's get this guy with the high diligence board and he's going to go down here to Elba 1. This is going to be a really not like look at the wealth on this world for a start. That's going to help offset some of the penalties we're going to be getting. It's a paradise world. It's also got Tekapod hives on. That's going to be a great world. Plus it's got Durantium in uh, so we can grab that pretty quick uh, quickly as well. Okay. See what we can find. Any more habitable worlds? Very likely to be one here, yes. Okay, nothing core world um nothing for core worlds there. I'm I'm tempted to try and play this tall, you know. Although I do like the planetary management that you that you get with um man, manually managing your own core worlds. For those of you who are new to this series, Galsiv's got a really, really interesting way of doing colony management that reduces micromanagement, for, well, reduces excessive management of planets for those players who want it. But if you like lots of colony management, it also allows you to do that too. Hello, prey meat. Have you come to present yourself for consumption by the Festron? Good, good. No, yeah, your eggs will become our fuel. Okay, so we found a mysterious object. This is the first anomaly surveyed. Uh, we'll get that as an event uh, as an event in a minute. We'll go and grab this space junk near our near our home world too. Um, how many cultural points have we got? We we are uh, we've got the progressivism ideology discount. This is like another tech tree, uh, but it's th it enables you. It adds new playstyles essentially. It enables you to tailor your playstyle in different ways. Um, I think we're going to lean heavily into technology on this game because I'd like to see some of the end game techs. All right, uh, what are we going to build here? We've gone into heavily into manufacturing. I think we'll go with some research now. Okay, yeah, that's going to give us research bonus as well. No, that's not the best place for it. Uh, yeah, maybe we put it here instead. So we'll get some we'll get some research. Then we're going to go with into the wealth generation a little bit. Um, I would like to get manufacturing, but we can, you'll find that we'll start getting that as we start pumping out, uh, uh, pumping out your citizens. We need one more durantium for your citizen. So we get we we'll have to build one of those guys next turn. There is a Diablo <clears throat> catalyst, a rare ship upgrade that significantly increases the. Uh, that's a really good one. 
What would you like to do next? I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna take that. The Diablo Catalyst is good. Increasing your fire rates on a ship can. You can put it. You can put it onto a, a very strong ship and get a really, <laughs> really, really powerful, was broken ship with that. And I'm gonna need it. I think on genius level. Okay, so I found some Durantium here. Oh, okay, so there's the Thestron look. Thestron are going to be up here. Probably here, look. Yeah, let's see if we can find where the Thestron are. Okay, I'm just going to send the seed in. It's going to grab that planet next turn. Valkyrie 1! A frozen world. Very, very nice. Looks like it's got some good research opportunities on there. Our archaeologists made a startling discovery. They stumbled upon an ancient base that once belonged to the enigmatic but now extinct Zendar. Uh, so the Zendar in the, the Galsiv Law really evil. Has the potential to significantly Let's do this. So let's roll the dice. We might end up. This might end up coming to bite us in the, in the butt because <laughs> uh, those dis those events do have decision chains that come off them. Event chains, sorry, that come off your decisions. Data transmission protocols. Okay, so uh, we can get the extra policy now. Uh, because we've gone that with that event, uh, Zendar event, it might be w might be wise to start going into the weapons stuff early. So let's do that. Let's go. Let's grab some weapon techs, uh, just in case Zendar do turn up. Okay. I want to rush build this if we can. Let's get that constructor up early so we can get this early Durantium out. Uh, that did that hurt us though financially. Wow, look at this. We can really go quite high without getting any penalties to um, production. There we are. Look, uh, I think I want... want it about there. Okay. Extreme automation is going to go in. Now, we're going to get a bit of a drop in our monthly income, but our, product our manufacturing goes up by 15%, which is pretty high. Okay. Colony ship's going to keep going where it's going. Uh, this we've got another surveyor, so where do we want to send this one? I'm tempted to send this guy out this way to go and grab these ones. So let's go and grab these artifacts that are a little bit further down here. There is likely to be an AI race down this way, unless we got very very lucky. Um, have we got a fighter here? Let's put a fighter here on Iconia. Send one up to this new colon, uh, core world that's going to be up here, and we'll send one down to this core world that's going to be down here. Uh, we've got a fourth one as well. I'll extend that to Iconia too. A fifth. Gosh, you get five fighters now. Okay. Okay, we've got some command ships. Ah, we've got command ships available. Good. This is a flagship. Both flagships. Um, we probably want to recruit a leader for these, but we don't have the money yet. Uh, I did. I could have sold the Diablo Catalyst, but. Uh, we've also got the opportunity to get another your citizen. I think we should build that as soon as possible. So we're going to get that guy. In fact, I'll get him first before we get the research district. Okay, we're going to... Uh, this probe... Oh, there's another um, decent planet there. It's not the best, though. However, we need exotic world colonization. We've got that, I think. Because we have already got adaptability. Okay, uh, the Altarians. It was doing nothing to us. Where are they? Where are they? Oh, there they are. Right, the Altarians are down here. They're dangerous. We're going to have to take those out early. The reason why they're dangerous is not because they're aggressive. At least they're not aggressive in terms of their output. Oh, wow, look at this. Though. Look at this Promethean. I think we need the Durantium first, though. So I'm going to go and... Yeah, I'm going to push... I'm going to put this out as far as I can get from my home world there we go yeah well um, I was thinking I could send it down this way but the, just to encompass these but well our natural influence generation should grab that let's put a mining star base up and get this Durantium tell you man start up make the best cinematics let's get mining drones up that's going to double the output of the uh it's going to use one of our modules, but it will double the output of the Durantium we're getting. We're going to be getting 0.7 per turn now, which is respectable. Uh, we want more. 
Uh, next, I think we're going to go grab this Promethean because the Promethean is going to be damn useful. Also, we've got Durantium down here and a nice little asteroid cluster plus a planet. Um, do we want to get this? I wonder if we can um, upgrade our fleet propulsion. Yeah, let's do this. Right, and let's see if we can grab this one here before the Altarians. I don't know if we'll get it, but I'd like to. If I can get that, then I can get all of this asteroid cluster and the uh, and the Durantium too. Okay, shipyard. Yeah, let's get another seed out. We need to start getting these um, these worlds out now, and we can do that because we're able to build more population. Right. Actually got two Durantium here. We can actually get more your we're just gonna spam out uh, citizens now and try to get claim as many planets around us as we can. Uh that's gonna be at the expense of increasing our manufacturing output, which is you know it's it's a trade-off, basically. It's a trade-off that you've got to make. Here's Valkyrie one. The composition of the atmosphere is unique and it's causing severe clogging in our equipment. Uh, okay, that's a bit of a problem. A faction led by synthetics? Curious. Okay, so we've found the Luxar. Uh, we've researched space weapons. Ah, oh, artificial gravity is going to give us plus one movement. That's also really nice economic development, but I think we're going to go for the artificial gravity for we've that movement. At least one planet we've colonized. Okay, this is another beginner mechanic uh, to kind of remind you to make a governor. I think we probably should do that, since we're getting quite a lot of supply attrition on this planet anyway. Now this guy, uh, I think we figured out this guy would make a really good governor. Yeah, this guy is a really good governor. But high loyalty as well. We need more money though. And I kind of want, you know, I need him there for a time being. Let's just wait for a little while. We just, we need more money. Um, hopefully we can rely on an event. Now we can get Eureka here. It's going to give us a temporary approval boost after discovering each new technology. Um, I kind of want the one that gives you the construction ships. I can't, uh, it's this one here, but we don't want pacifism. It doesn't really suit, suit our play style. Um, so, hmm. nihilism's good. Three, th three free supply ships will be very, very good. That's going to be 12 cultural points, so it'll be another couple of turns. Um, now, we, one tech thing for the Yor is just to race down this tree and just really supercharge their research, because this is the research tree, right? Um, it mostly improves research. It's quite focused in that respect, where some of the other trees do a lot of different things. Like this one, a little bit of combat, a little bit of trading. You know, a little bit of extra diligence for your citizens. Uh, well, for your citizens that are not of your species. That's not good for us, so we're not going to be we're not going to be using those. Plus an income on all worlds as well. It gives you a 30 research point bonus immediately. Yeah, I, I also like individualism because you can get the uh, entrepreneur, which is pretty useful. All of these early ones are pretty good, to be honest. The three free colony ships could be really good too. But I think we're going to go into. Uh, I think we're going to play sort of thematically rather than min max like. Now that might come to bite me in the butt, but let's try and go. Uh, we'll go down this tree. I think in this one. Okay, that's going to give us frigates. Uh, let's just go to the Tech Navigator and see what we've got. So, Orbital Manufacturing would be good for in the logistics. In Engineering, instead, we could go with Asteroid Mining. I think I'm going to pick one of the, the quicker ones to come out. Yeah, let's get let's get defensive studies. I think because it's expensive, and I think it'd be nice to get that early because we are going to run up into we're going to run into trouble pretty soon. I mean, we've got the Festron on our borders. They're not necessarily going to go for us quickly, but eh, you never know. I probably need more probes, by the way. One of the nice things about the Yor is you get this big sensor range around you at the early game. Very, very different to other civilizations in that respect. The Yor have got ex like amazing, amazing um, reconnaissance. Okay, uh, we've got another worker here. Got low social skills, though. Mind you, that's kind of common for the Yor. Let's get that guy out, and we'll send this one down here. Now, I'll be, I think we'll be lucky if we can get this 
planet before the uh, the Altarians reach it. But let's see if we can snipe it. Um, it looks like it's likely to be closer to them than us, but we'll see. Let's see if we can get lucky. Uh, let's get a let's get another seed out, and we'll start really start colonizing these worlds. Um, we need more Durantium, but we should have some next turn, and then we'll, we'll build another population. I do want to get a little bit of a boost on our research. Now, um, I'm not an expert min-maxer at this game. I don't really... I, you know, I like to I like to min-max where I can, but it's not my sole focus. These would... By the way, these guys would be a good... Um, this, this minor world would be good to trade with, because no matter... I mean, it would also be good to trade with these guys here. Although we can't quite reach them yet, but we could trade with the server. That might be a good idea. Get some early income. Let's get that packet out first. Packet being the name of the ship. Or the name of the uh, ship class or type. There's an artifact there. Okay. Oh, we got another manufacturing population. I don't want to spend the credits on that. We, we There's other things we need to spend the credits on. Okay. Oh, I think we're going to make it, look, guys. To Hadrian 3. Unless something comes in very, very quickly and takes it before us. The more Durant There's got Durantium here as well. If we get this on a trade agreement, look, we'll actually get access to that Durantium. Then we can send a constructor up there and grab it. Let's send this... Um, got a probe. I think we send the probe down this way. Wait a minute. Is that a probe? No, it's a fighter. Okay, we'll just keep the fighter there. All right. <clears throat> okay, so uh, YouTube doesn't necessarily punish you now for longer videos. In fact, it actually seems to reward it a little bit more. So I'm I'm not I'm going to play to an hour, I think. Okay, so we found the uh, the moths. I forget what they're called now. Process complement. Um, defensive studies. That's going to give us some defensive stuff for our ships. Uh, what do we want next? Research is a little, a little slow for my liking. I wonder if getting research districts might be a good bet. Yeah, I think so. And we need to start building some research, more research on our, on our world because this is poor. We've got really bad research here. Yeah, it's going to give us a uh, level 3, uh, sorry, a level 3 boost. God, dil uh, we could swap some diligence over to intelligence. Oh, we can't train the scientists yet. We need the Xeno research tech. Okay. <clears throat> but I, I think I want the, uh, I want the uh, extra your citizens first. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Oh, this is a packet. Let's send the packet out to server here. Looks like those are also... What race is this? The Pro, uh, Procyonians. Or Procyonians. They were born in a world of code. Okay, so these are another synthetic race. That's pretty cool. Because they're going to they're gonna provide us with some decent stuff. Although they are quite a long way away from us. So it's not going to be the best world. It's, worth, it's still worth trading with them though. It's going to be instant money for us. Okay, uh, this fight is just going to stay there still. And we want a leader, so uh, we're not we're not going to be able to get a leader for a while. Hopefully, we'll find uh, something in the space junk that we're searching. Looks like the Altarians are about to discover us with their probe, so they're about to find out where we are. Let's grab Hadrian Three here. Ah, warning: we have got um, a pirate fleet. However, we can destroy that. We can't kill that cutter though, so. Yes, this is just a small surveying flagship. Got to wait, make sure that that cutter doesn't come by. I would strongly advise you do not automate your ships, by the way, and uh, your weaker ships when there's pirates and things around. Let's colonize Hadrian III. An ancient precursor civilization has been discovered on this planet. If a governor were to make use of it, it could prove to be highly beneficial. No, we don't care about that. Well, let's get the Illyrium and the precursor nanites. We don't need food. There's Hadrian III. Uh, we're losing 50% of, every, of everything to supply... Um, uh, because of the supply penalty here, the supply attrition. Still, it's better than a kick in the teeth. Uh, we need to get some of the closer planets now. I was going 
going to start getting some more of these seeds out. I, I've, I've taken a bit of a, a greedy risk taking these planets so that others can't get them. Um, but it, I am going to start getting these other, you know, colonies that are a little bit closer. It's going to be very important for us to do. An exploration vessel from Manti is floating amidst the debris. Some uh, of the crew members are still alive, and they allege that they were attacked by pirates. These Manti were on a quest to find hints of the generation of Manti children taken from their home planet. Uh, I don't know if we Despite want to do this as the or No, let's just let them get on with it. We are the bad guys. Okay, they want extreme colonization for all this stuff. Nope, not giving you that. That's too good a tech. I don't care what you're giving me. That's too good a tech. Oh, wow, we really do need some more research, though, don't we? Yeah, research is a little bit weak. Okay, we're going to upgrade this surveyor with... This is just a surveyor. We're not going to give it the Diablo Catalyst. Let's give it a command bridge for the extra move. One of the nice things about the yacht is we get lots of Durantium, which means that we can build that extended hull that these sh uh, ships really like. Uh, these that our ships really like. Okay, let's get this surveyor down this way, and we'll grab some of this space junk here. If we get lucky, we'll get one that we'll be able to sell for some money. I, I personally think that it's the money that you get from selling uh, junk is a little bit too high. Some of them is just kind of, well, they used to be crazy. <laughs> you used to be able to sell them for like 500, 600, that kind of thing. And I think that's a little bit too much. Although it does make a play style where you really focus on the flagships quite viable. So, you know, that's that's something. Okay, let's get this guy out. This is going to weaken our uh, production, by the way. But it does enable us to get some of these colonies that's around us. This one's going to be a nice one. Let's go and grab that one. Yeah, we're going to, uh, we do need some more your citizens. Ah, what have we got here? Okay, the coordination beacon gives us extra control. This is really valuable. We want it as early as possible. Uh, does it also give you a wealth? No, it's influence. Let's get rid of that. And we'll put this coordination beacon here, I think. That's going to give us a, a bigger influence boost. That's really, really good. Plus, the control is really worthwhile getting. Okay. Uh, that's just going to stay there. I'm going to colonize uh, Ebla 1. Okay, uh, we don't have any governors at the moment. So, again, kind of going leaning into the tall star play here. Let's get a fighter on here, just, to, just to, as a guardian. Now, you can put your fighters together and sort of use them to help fight out. In fact, that might be a better idea. Let me send this fighter over here. Oh, looks a Durantium there, look. Although, it's a little bit out of our range. I think we'll head towards this star here. Uh, Pipalta 1. Potential colony. Later in the game. Okay, it's going to be the last couple of turns, I think. Desperately need money, although we're getting a lot more now, and we'll get even more once this uh, freighter gets where they're going. <laughs> the 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 Terrans are sort of threatening us, and I don't care about them. Okay, I wonder where they are though. Okay, there we go. So we've colonised a, a world, and here's the here's the Torians too. There we go. So um, we've got a little bit of extra manufacturing now. And research coming in from these court from these uh, colonies they're going to be a real important thing for us okay threat registered we anticipate a change in results this is the uh, korath i wonder where they are so we're starting to find no, there's the taurians look so they're up they're up here somewhere okay let's just get this uh this one out and grab this diesel Let's get another packet out. Let's start trading with people. Now, trading is really strong in this game. The reason being is it not only gives you a big a cash boost, but it also uh, starts to build your influence. Sorry, your um, diplomatic relations. Alien civilizations will value trade in this game, and they, you know, because it's strong. And because 
the longer you trade with them, the more of a diplomatic bonus you'll get. So the less likely they are to betray you. Uh, you'll need all the friends they can get. <laughs> Let me tell you that. They are really, really, you know, they desperately, desperately, desperately need uh, friends in this game. Okay. Yeah, we're going to start getting some more. Uh, we do need to get some research up, I think. Now, is that going to be be is that going to be better than get spamming out the uh, the your citizens and getting these? Uh, I think we probably should get the worlds first. Yeah, then we'll go for well, then we'll upgrade our research. I think. So, yeah, maybe I get more your citizens first. Get another couple of citizens out. We want to at least try to get these closest these closest worlds before the uh, the the AI starts picking up on them. Okay. As our civilization stands on the threshold of interstellar expansion, internal divisions are coming to the surface. The leap from seclusion on our homeworld. Okay, let's get the new knowledge. The, uh, the reason being is. Complex mix of anticipation and apprehension. Ah, uh, hang on. Is that just going to give us a research boost? Concerns about the unpredictable dynamics of interacting with organic life forms and the moral implications of such encounters. These vie with the excitement of discovery. I think we got enough Durantium like coming in as we to, for what we need. Let's let's get the knowledge. That's given us a bit of a research boost. Um. Yeah, space doctrine might be worth getting. Subspace scanning is going to give us ship range, sensor range. Let's go for uh, space doctrine and get the frigates out because uh, if we end up in an early war, we we do need to start thinking about building. Oh uh, yeah, look, I'm predictably low in the rankings. I know that they're, they're, it's all pretty tight at the moment, but yeah, if we, we do need to start getting ships out because it will dissuade enemies from attacking us early. All right, guys, I'm going to end the episode here. Hope you're enjoying this series. I'm going to try and play an episode of this every day if I can, um, but I I can't promise that. Just you know, I, I get busy and I have other things I've got to do, and I'm completely bloody addicted to fighting games at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I've not played any strategy games for two months other than at work, so um, it's been actually really fun to come back to this. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you are new to the channel, please like like the video, subscribe to the channel so you get all the updates, hit the bell notification and all that YouTube stuff. Um, it, yeah, it helps the channel. It helps my channel grow, and I've, I've not put any videos out for two months, so my channel's kind of, yeah, it needs a bit of help. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you next time. Take it easy.